you know, I think that when when people give you information, I, I do think it's important to pay attention to it. Um, when somebody says, hey, man, I think you should check out this podcast. Now, you know, it might be an idiot friend who doesn't know, like, what it is you're trying to do or whatever. But I think it's a good idea to investigate. It's a good idea to write it down and to, like, look into it. Or, like, you're reading that sleep book, mm-hmm. you know. We've heard so many people come on here talking about sleep. And it's just wise. Like, what, like, and you listen to Rogan and you listen to the guy. What was the guy's name? Michael or Matt? Uh, Matthew Walker. Matthew Walker. Um, and you listen to Matthew Walker and you listen to him talking about sleep and the importance of it. It makes sense to seek out more information. Mm-hmm. Obviously, you were like, hey, I think I can improve my sleep. And then what's the follow through on that? The follow through is, no, you know what? I'm going to try a couple things. I heard a couple of people mention these two or three different things. You went to look for the nose strips, couldn't find them or whatever. <laughs> it, it just, that's the follow through. Mm-hmm. But you got to complete the follow through. Yeah. You got the book. That's part of it. Well, now you're reading it. That's a huge, that's a lot of people will get the book and getting the book and having the book on your shelf, like on display and people are like, oh, you read that book? And you're like, yep. And you didn't because <laughs> yeah. you're your dumbass. That's what most <laughs> people are missing. They're just, they're missing that little extra piece. Yeah. They're missing that little follow through. And I think a lot of times it happens because we paralyze ourselves. You know, it's called analysis paralysis where you overanalyze the reasons on why and why you shouldn't, mm-hmm. why you shouldn't, shouldn't do stuff. Um, when I was, uh, when I was doing the really early morning workouts, um, something I really enjoyed about doing some of those really early morning workouts and doing like fasted cardio and stuff was if I actually woke up at the right time, I could do a half an hour of cardio, quote unquote, in my sleep. Like I was like a zombie. Like I, I just, I barely knew what happened. And if I if I move, you know, I put like a towel or something over the clock because who wants to look at that when you're trying to do an hour of that shit. But if I did that midday, it was a horrible task to try to do it midday or after a lifting session. I was like, I'm not doing that. But when I did it super early in the morning, I was able to get into a peak state. But, you know, before before my body was even really normally ready to do any of that. So mm-hmm. a half an hour would eclipse. And I'd look at it and I'd be like, oh my God, I'm already 40 minutes in. I got 20 more minutes of this. This is going to be easy. Rather than like dragging ass and showing up at like eight or whatever, showing up like right when the gym opens up, getting in there right as they open the doors, cranking through a bunch of it uh, before I was even awake. And now I got my dad doing the same thing. He's not waking up that early, but because he and I talked about how important it is for him to sleep as well. He's been training for 25 days in a row. And he's lost, he's lost about 15 pounds, you know, and he's, he's feeling a lot better. He's getting in there like right around seven o'clock every day. My wife actually told me this morning, she's like, I'm at swim practice and your dad's over here training. Oh, nice. Dad's over here lifting because she goes to uh, Davis Swim and Fitness. It's her, is our friend's uh, gym out there. And so I, I, you know, the follow through is really important. I've been telling my dad about lifting forever. My dad came to me like you know, a few weeks ago and he's like, man, my blood pressure's high. And, you know, he was all concerned about it. I said, dad, all you got to do is this, is, this is very simple. Let's not, let's not think that this is a mountain to climb. This is a, a this is like stepping up onto a curb. That's how hard this is. That's how hard it's going to be. Yeah. It's not going to be any harder than that. All you have to do is recognize, oh, there's a curb there. I'm, I don't want to trip over it. And all you do is pick up your foot a little higher than, than you normally would to take a step forward. And that's it. Sure. And, it's a matter of just getting started. And once you get started to have that follow through, he could have said, oh yeah, my son said to go to the gym. So I'm going to go get a membership, right? You can't go get him. He was like, oh, I think I'm going to go over there one day and get a membership. I said, no, no. I said, no, you're not, you're not doing that. I said, you and I are going to go tomorrow. We're, we're going to go, you're going to do cardio and you're going to lift. And he's like, but I'm not signed up. I'm like, it won't matter. Just <laughs> Let's just go. Yeah. You know, he's because he's thinking about the barriers, right? Yeah. And don't think about any of that. You know, don't the old uh, and this is from John Madden. Don't worry about the horse being blind. Just load the wagon. He'd say that before every football game. And that's a philosophy that I strongly believe in. Like, who cares about the details? 
I don't care how we're going to get there. We're going to get, we're going to figure out how to get there. Let's figure it out together. And so I just went to the gym that one day with my dad and I said, you're going to do this every day. And you know, what's, I, I talked to him too. I was like, dad, you overcame cancer. You've overcome diabetes in the past. You've overcome all these things, all these obstacles. You overcame being with my crazy mom for however many years. <laughs> Sorry, mom. Uh, forever long you guys have been together for and <clears throat> you've overcome all these things you have a lot of strength in you you're a lot stronger than you understand but meanwhile you don't have the strength to walk by a bowl of potato chips without eating a bunch of them because mm -hmm. you're like ah oh, screw it like i'll just have but why what's the point in that like wh <laughs> what's it for is it is it a reward if it's a reward because you're working hard and it's your birthday <laughs> or it's you know we don't want to get into celebrating too many things, but celebrations are okay. And if you want to have a beer or a glass of wine or a burrito or whatever it is you want to have, then just, just make sure there's a conscious decision that that's not what you do most of the time. Mm -hmm. I mean, people, people have a hard time with this follow through concept. And it's mainly just because people are really weak. I mean, they just really are. And we all have our strengths. We all have our weaknesses. We're all weak in different areas. Um, no one can be uh, perfect all the way through on everything that we do. There's going to be temptations. There's going to be things that pull us away from stuff all the time. And that's what makes it so difficult is it's constant. You're constantly being pulled off target. You're consistently being pulled off target. But if you really pay attention, there's nobody pulling you off target more so than yourself. It's, it's almost always you. And a way to combat that is to talk to other people around you. Um, I didn't start Power Magazine by myself. I didn't invent the slingshot by myself. <clears throat> Power Magazine was an idea that I had together with my wife. And my wife happened to know how to make magazines because she was already in advertising for magazines. And so I said, this magazine sucks that I'm reading. I was reading Power of the USA. I'm very thankful that Power of the USA existed because it got me excited about Power of the But I was like, this is a shit magazine because why is it reporting on all these people that are really weak? I don't care about what somebody did um, in, uh, in Alaska in the, one, one, in the 165 <laughs> weight class in the squad or whatever. Right? You know, this guy that's 60 years old or whatever. I want to know. What are the best guys in the world doing? What are the strongest guys in the world doing? What are what does their workouts look like? Like when you read Flex Magazine or Muscle and Fitness and some of these other magazines, that's what it showed you 10, 15 years ago. It showed you the best. And I'm like, this is crap. She said, well, uh, let's just make our own magazine. And so we did. And we started, we had follow through on that. We And we worked on it together. When I had the idea of the slingshot, I don't know how to sew stuff. I don't know how to actually like make or create the material that slingshot is made out of i took a bunch of material that i had that i would pull on and stretch on and mess with all the time and i took it to a family friend and said hey here's the shape i want this sewed up in she did that and i took it and i used it and the damn thing worked and i was fired up and i was like this is great make more of these she made more of them and my wife and I together tried to figure out different ways of getting these mass produced. None of those ideas worked. I used my phone <clears throat> and I Googled, uh, I, I used Google and typed in a very complicated search that said knee wrap manufacturers and boom, rest is history. <clears throat> the point is, is I let other people around me know. And the point is you gotta be resourceful. You gotta let other people know you can't give up. If, if you're going to have follow through on something, it has to be seen all the way to the end. You have to actually follow through with it. Uh, what's the point in doing 40% of it? It's just another thing that's not done. It's another thing to give you anxiety. It's another thing to get you upset and to make you um, nervous and worried about it all the time. Those are going to be the things you worry about the most are going to be these things that you had some half-hearted effort put into. You didn't... Um, you took some time to go for it. You know, you took you took time to recognize, say, you know what? 
I'm fatter than I want to be. <laughs> I'm going to order that uh, bike that I saw, you know, that stationary bike that I saw on the internet or whatever. And you order it. And then, and then what? And then it just sits there. <laughs> you don't ever use it. It gets used as a coat hanger. It gets used as a coat hanger. You, there's a lot of things. There's, you have a, we have a lot of great resources around us. Um, and, you know, again, I, I know these things because I do all these things too. I fall short on stuff all the time. It's just it's human nature. Um, but I've gotten better over the years. I've improved at these things over the years. I have worked on following through on a lot of these things. <laughs> um, and I think that it's just a huge, it's a huge gap between the people that get what they want out of life and the people that don't. It's a very, very simple concept to understand that. There's two types of people in the world. There's people that get what they want and they do it when they want, how they want. And there's people that do not. And it's just as simple as figuring out a way to follow through on what it is that you're trying to do. Part of being focused, we mentioned it when Brian Shaw was on the podcast, a very big part of being focused is blocking out all the noise, blocking out all the extracurricular activities that are happening, all the things that are going on, having blinders on. You know, when a horse is in a horse race, if they don't have blinders on, what do they do? Go all over the place. <laughs> they not only go all over the place, they fall, they hurt themselves, they hurt the other horses around them, and they die. Mm -hmm. They get executed because it's a racehorse, and that's what they do. They put them down a lot of times. Fucking things running so hard and so fast, but because it's going so hard and so fast, and it's not paying attention to exactly what it needs to do, it falls. Mm -hmm. So it has blinders on to help prevent some of that. I mean, sometimes, unfortunately, they fall anyway, but <clears throat> the blinders help prevent that. And that's what happens with people. They're, they're not focusing in and not honing in on that thing that they said they were going to do. And you have to remember who, who said that you were going to do it in the first place. It, it probably came from you. Where does lifting start? Lifting doesn't start in your stomach, you know? Lifting doesn't start in your biceps. Lifting doesn't start in your ass. Lifting starts between your ears. It starts in your brain. You had a conscious decision. I don't look the way I want to look. I, I don't want other kids to freaking push me around on the playground. I want that to be the end of that. And I want to be bigger. And I want them to, to look at me and go, man, I, mm -hmm. I ain't pushing that guy. Yeah. I don't, I don't, that probably would not be a good idea. That guy looks a lot bigger than me. I ain't pushing him. Or you want to have the ability to defend yourself if you need to, or at least look like you can. Uh, or the other conversation is, man, I just want to, I want to look better. I want to be able to, like, my friends are starting to get chicks and I can't figure this thing out. <laughs> I'm going to go do some curls. I'm going to show these, I'm going to show these chicks what's up. Straight to the curls. Straight. I feel this in my triceps. <laughs> <laughs> That's a famous <laughs> quote from Andrew. He feels everything in his triceps. Today's leg workout was really tough on my triceps. Well, they're growing. It, I mean, <laughs> load, loading up the plates for you. It's just really bad on the triceps. Today was a monster squat. Today workout. was great. I'm not going to recover from that. And then yesterday's booby workout. Chesticles. That was really good. Just another day for Smokey, though. Yep. Yeah, Smokey yeah. probably just brushed it off. Probably doesn't even feel it anymore. Nope. All those years of training. Yeah. Um, when you were talking about like looking online, getting the uh, exercise bike, have you seen this mirror that you can? It's looks on like, wheels. It, so yes, th there's a stand for it. So I know we're getting excited, but you can like turn it on, and you have like an online like coach mm. to go through like certain movements. But you see yourself in the mirror while the coach is doing it as well. Wow. I don't know if it's like a virtual coach or if like there's actually somebody on the other end, but like you, you work out in like a, a room, right? And you can like post selfies and you see everybody else in your group. I'll tell you it's where there needs to be a mirror. There needs to be a mirror in front of the bowl that you're eating, right?